So we are here back again at the New World Tavern, uh, where we always have our life drawing the first Monday of every month. And uh, this is a special episode. Uh, we are here with uh, Carl. Hello, everybody. Who is the owner, or one of the owners, I should say, one of the, owners, of yeah. the New World Tavern. And we've been working with Carl now three and a half years. Um, he's yet to throw, throw us out. Um, I've, I've yet to uh, been asked to model you. What well, was that one time? I guess I didn't want to model. Well, that was a high quality year. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for our listeners, Carl, how long has the New World Tavern been here? New World Tavern opened on November 11th, 2011. Uh, we are in our sixth year right now, just finished five years. So, that's um, pretty similar to Meteor. Uh, Meteor got started in 2011 and December. Yes. Um, but we started working together about three and a half years ago. I came in and asked you if we could use the bathroom for our life drawing. I remember we had that meeting up front and you said we were doing life drawing and I didn't have any idea what you were talking about and you explained it to me and I still didn't have any idea what you were talking about. Yeah, I believe you were like, is it new? I just want to know so I can be and, 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 <laughs> and then we kept on telling Sean they were new to get that coming oh, back right, in. Right, right, that's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, that was great. Ah, I think that was the day where I'm like, oh, it's going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what did you do prior to um, owning a restaurant? You always worked in the restaurant field? No, no, no. I started 100 years ago with Coca-Cola, worked there for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, went to a dot-com company. It was uh, almost like a peapot company. Okay, yeah. Uh, back in the late 90s. And then when that bubble burst, uh, that company ended up closing, and I went to work for a beer store. Okay. Yep, ended up buying um, all the beer from all the breweries. I dealt with all the different breweries. Yeah. And that was slowly as the craft beer scene was coming yeah. on the south shore. Right, on the south shore. strong. In the cities, yeah. yes. In the cities it was, you know, it's been like that for years and years and years. Right. This was when, uh, when I think the only craft beer bar in Plymouth was really the BBC and the BBC, BBC yeah. 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 on Middle Street. Mm -hmm. And so now you're right up there with the rest of them. Uh, the way. How many beers do you have on tap here? Uh, we have 32 beers in the main bar and we have six beers in the back bar. And, and that doesn't include bottles? No, oh, bottles, no, nope, yeah. yep. So anything in the bottle I probably have at any time over 150. Wow, yep. okay. And we don't just do the craft beer. Yeah. We uh, we do the Bud, the Bud Light, the Coors, the Miller, or the Globe Ultra. Mm -hmm. uh, we've always wanted to be that place. Whenever I wanted to open this place, um, me and my wife would always go to a bar to check out what was going on. Right. Yeah. And back then she was a Bud Light drinker. Okay. And I couldn't go anywhere because if they didn't carry Bud Light, she'd be like, well, I don't want to go there because I don't like anything that they have on tap. Right. So I always knew that I wanted to be that bar that offered something for everybody. Right. Um, I, I do like craft beer, uh, but I always said, drink what you like. If you like a Michelob Ultra, then drink a Michelob Ultra. Right. You don't want to, because I've been to places where, like, oh, we don't have that. And it kind of gives off, uh, we don't want to beer kind of product. Yeah. You, you, you're right, you're right. But if, if, if I'm looking to do business and there's four guys going out and three of them are craft beer drinkers and one of them is a Bud Light drinker, you want you're going you're gonna to lose four people because right. you don't have Bud Light. Exactly. You know? yeah, so. yeah. Um, and the, uh, the food here is probably the most ridiculous, phenomenal, best stuff ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, what was your idea behind it? Because it's not. How would you describe it? Well, pub food. No, it's it, some people call it a bistro, even though I, I I don't know why, but I don't care for that word. Uh, we just wanted to elevate our food to where our draft beer was. Okay. And five years ago, um, when the craft beer was coming out, uh, it's a little more expensive. Uh, we didn't want to just have chicken wings and nachos and pizzas. Right. Uh, and have a great craft beer portfolio. We wanted to have a little bit of both so that people could enjoy. Everything that can come here, and uh, you know, really make it an experience. Yeah, I mean, we are an eager but we do have some non-drinkers that come to our events, mm -hmm. and they're always big fans. Good, good. And you know what? It's funny because we didn't want to be that pizza wing and, and burger joint, but that's probably ninety percent of our sales. Yeah, flat just, and Yeah, nice. because you know, we what we try to do is we try to put our own twist on everything. Yeah, and if it's going to be a burger, we really want it to be a really good burger. It's right. a pizza, it's a really good pizza. And that's the thing is, is like it's the pizza here is I was called flatbread because I guess put it on the menu, but it is 
not, in my mind, it's not pizza. I mean, it's like, I don't it's not, it's, yeah, it's, it's not a sub shop. Right, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, but it's damn delicious. Well, thank you. Um, I remember my favorite. Uh, so, uh, so you said you used to go out with your wife and, um, that she was a Bud Light drinker because she expanded her, uh, oh, her she, horizons. Oh, she, she, or? Yes, she was Bud Light, Bud Light, Bud Light. And then for some reason, and it doesn't happen to a lot of people this way, she went from a Bud Light to quarters and stouts. Really? Yeah. That's a weird thing. It's a huge leap. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah, a huge yeah, yeah. Leap. Um, But I get a lot of people that come in here that don't like craft beers because they had the first craft beer they ever had was the hoppiest beer. Yeah. Back, back five years ago, four years ago, it was all about the double IPAs and how much hops you can put in and, you know, how bitter it would be and how, you know, hoppy the beer would be. Uh, double IPAs, triple IPAs. And uh, I think a lot of people take that for the first time, thinking that that's what the craft beer is like. Right. They sip it, they don't like it, and they're just, it, it, it takes they're them, done. It, they're done. They're done. And you can't really blame them. You can't. No. It's, it's hard to jump from, you know, a Michelob Ultra to a double IPA. Mm -hmm. But I think if you, uh, like Blue Moon, people like Blue Moon. Yeah. And people come here and say, oh, I'd really like a Blue Moon. I'll give them a Blue Moon if they want, but I'll tell them, listen, there's other things on draft that are like a Blue Moon. Right. Why don't you try one of those? And you guys offer flights, right? We so offer flights. Yep. Five so different beers, five four ounce, four and a half ounce beers. Uh, but I think the most important thing is is to really bring that craft, you know, the new craft beer drinker, uh, into a style that they like and give them different versions of yeah. that style of beer. Uh, and there seems to always be something going on here. Uh, so, I mean, we've been running events here for quite a while, but uh, you have a whole concert hall in the back, which is where we are right now. And you have bands play here too, uh, We have bands in the back uh, every Friday and Saturday, depending on the season. Yeah. Uh, if not a band, we might stick in a DJ every once in a while. Mm -hmm. We try to have the local bands, uh, you know, people from Massachusetts that come in. Uh, I think the closer the bands, the better the draw. Yeah, yeah, the bigger the right. crowd because people want to see their families. People sure. want to see their friends. Uh, we keep, we have a lot of luck, believe it or not, with Aegis Nights. Well, I think it, it seems pretty popular. Right? Seems to be, seems to be coming back. Um, reggae is very popular, uh, and I think that we've had the fans come in that do their own, their own music. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. But I think the general populace that come in and sees a band in the back room, if they know this song, they're gonna come in. Right. If they come in the back room and they stay for two songs and they're like, I don't know what these guys are singing, I just don't know the music, mm -hmm. then they're more apt to leave. And I think that's, that, that is something we've talked about with musicians on the podcast, it's that fine line between playing your stuff and getting a crowd and playing around town. People wanna to know, so you don't hear what they know. Um, it's, it's a lot like brewing beer. Yeah. Uh, if you brew an IPA, and it's the best IPA in the world, people will come and drink their IPA, but after a while they're going to be, okay, uh, uh, I'm not coming back. Yeah. So if you give it the variety, so if a band comes in here and he plays you know, a couple of cover songs, a couple of their own stuff, a couple more cover songs, a couple of their own stuff, I think they're slowly going to get those people in to see what kind of band they are. Sure. And yeah. they're going to get them a lot bigger following if they do that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's kind of like... Uh, had a buddy of mine that used to have the root beer test. Anytime he saw like some weird soda company, you know, I would get the root beer. Like if you could drink the malt cream beverage flavor, but you don't really know what it's supposed to taste like. Yep. So you're not sure if you like it, but you drink the root beer, you know what root beer is supposed That's to right. taste like. That's right. So you get a band, you're like, I don't know what this is supposed to sound like. Right. But if they're playing something you know. Both had a lot of luck with bands. Yeah. A lot of luck with bands. And uh, you've had uh, we're recording this on Thursday night. You've had the same guy here playing on Thursday nights for how long? I would say three years now. Yeah. Yep, Mark Small. Yeah. Yep, Mark T. Small is up front playing the blues. And, um, yeah, so he's been, I think he's been here longer than you, Jared. Yeah. So, I would say it's pretty close. Yeah. It's pretty close. And, um, and his pack out there, so he draws a pretty good crowd. He draws so a very good crowd. Like a yep, he's won a lot of awards out there. He's, um, I mean, he, he lives for what he does. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can tell that he's very good at it. He enjoys it. People enjoy him. He's a nice guy. Uh, it just it kind of, it, he's the, the whole package where people just enjoy what he does. He likes to come. I've got people coming all the way from Framingham on a Thursday. Wow. Just to watch him play. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, and uh, so you guys also do trivia. Um, like what else do you have going on? Uh, we have trivia. Well, we, right now we do. Um, you don't do karaoke. We do. You do karaoke. Yeah, we'll see. That's Tuesdays. I'm on Mondays. Oh, All right, so sorry, Mondays. Sorry, I'm Mondays. <laughs> we have uh, what we call the noodle night. So we have the Asian noodle bowls. The ramen. So uh, that is my girlfriend's favorite. Uh, it was last winter. It was uh, the first Monday of last February. We had a crazy snowstorm. So we had to cancel our life here. I got home from work and her car, we ended up driving, it's like 45 degrees. And her car stuck half the way up in the snow. And uh, it was kind of like late in the season and like the rest of the, the week was still going in the 60s. And so she's like, no, the snow's going to melt. I'm just going to leave the car there. I'll put the taxi to work. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I'll get that car to touch. No, 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 no. It's going to go down the hill. funny. And, and uh, she pops on Facebook and she's like, oh. Yeah, I'm glad she did. Yeah. Uh, so that's Monday nights. Tuesday nights we do a karaoke. Uh, I believe it starts at 8:30. And now do you get a good crowd? Yeah, it, it's yeah. fairly new. It's fairly new. We've only started about a month ago. And I think the first night was election night. The second night it was a huge rainstorm. The third time it was you know something else. So we're starting to get that into uh, a rhythm now. Uh, Wednesdays we do trivia. Yeah. Seven seven o'clock, seven to ten. That's seven to nine really. Seven to nine thirty. And uh, Thursdays we have Mark Small and then Friday, Saturdays we have fans in the back. Mm -hmm. And then on Sundays, if the Patriots are not playing, yeah, at one o'clock right? we have an Irish yeah. No. Oh no. Ho no. <laughs> This is what I learned. Five okay. years in the business. It is not an Irish session. Okay. It is an Irish uh, band. Yeah. That Plays. An Irish session means that anybody can come up and play with it. Oh, okay. So and it's a session, I think they call it. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it's different from that. We have um, so it's, it's, the dailies come and play, and they'll host it. Okay, yeah. And there's a couple of different people that come up and play with them. Yeah, from, uh, which is fine, yeah. Well. Which is fine. We just didn't want to have every Tom, Dick, and Harry coming in and thinking they can get you know, jumping up there with an instrument that they've never played before. That's Tuesday night. And after, yeah, that, that's Tuesday night. That's Tuesday night. Yeah. But everybody thinks they can sing an Irish song until they get up there and start singing, and they only know like two, two verses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they, they know the chorus. But they pack it in on a, on a Sunday afternoon, and uh, it's a fun. It's not. It's not an Irish session where you know they're singing "Old Danny Boy" and everybody has to be quiet. It's more of the, the bar music where everybody's yeah. clapping and having a good time and cheering yeah. on. So, yeah. Um, what has been your favorite uh, band to play here? Don't ask me that. She's going to put me in a lot of trouble if I do that. I didn't ask you who you don't like. Uh, You're not yeah. my favorite. Uh, you know what? I'm going to answer that in, in, in a funny way. Why don't you ask me what my favorite beer is instead? Okay. And then I'll answer the band question with the band question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hear it. So, uh, Carl, what is your favorite beer? Well, it's like, it differs all the time. Okay. Uh, right now, I would have to say my favorite beer is Guinness. I got 32 lines. Yeah. And it's Guinness because it's just to me it's Guinness season. It's just starting to get cold. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the summers, I back off the Guinnesses and I'm drinking the IPAs. I'm um, drinking the wheat beers. It's just. Okay. I, 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 it's, 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 it's you're gonna get into it slow. I'm yeah. telling you, you've had the wrong ones if you don't like it. it must be. You've had the wrong well, ones. I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Um, so you guys have a beer club card? We do. Where uh, there's a, a checklist, and you have to drink one of each tap, and then one of each. Not of every bottle of beer. Not of every bottle. Of ninety-nine. They're all numbered. And the numbers vary. That's correct. And if our listeners, are each, you can almost do it. You can almost do it without bringing an idea. You, you can. can. You can. If you do it right. If you do it right. You it can. took me a while, and I had to suck down some idea, but I, I, I did pretty well. Sorry, that's okay. Uh, well, uh, once Oktoberfest hits, it's Oktoberfest. Yeah. Two weeks into Oktoberfest, I'm done with Oktoberfest. Yeah. Uh, I know everybody's going to say, oh, I can't believe you said this uh, on the air, but I really do like the pumpkin beers. Yeah. I look forward to the pumpkin beers. Some, some are good, some are not so good. <laughs> you know what? They do, because I make them put them on tap. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people, a lot of pure beer, Aficionados, craft beer aficionados, don't like the pumpkin. For some reason, well, I, I feel that's like a backlash against the everything pumpkin spice. 
No, you know what I think it is? I think it's because way back when Shipyard came out, well, Brooklyn came out, I think, with the first one. Okay. Shipyard's the first one I don't, don't call up and say that more. But Shipyard was the first real popular one that came out. And you either really, really liked it or you didn't like it at all. Yep. And the craft beer drinkers were like, oh, I can't believe it with pumpkin spice and nutmeg and all that in the beer. It's not a true beer anymore. But if you look at all the craft beers now, 90% of them are putting something in their beer or brewing in a different way. I'm drinking a chocolate peanut butter beer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and it's delicious. And you know what? Drink what you like. Right. So uh, we, we hear, we get a lot of uh, beer lovers yeah. and not so much the beer snobs. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think you can be a beer snob and, and really try to have a pure, pure beer anymore because the, the way the craft beer is, it's not that way anymore. Right, everything's trying Every, to have that, that leg up on them. Everybody yeah. wants it. People want what they haven't had yet. Right. And the brewers are trying to make what people haven't had yet. Mm -hmm. um, All right, so uh, please excuse that little interruption. We had some technical difficulties. Our computer crashed here, but it uh, looks like we didn't miss too much. So Carl was telling us about his uh, favorite beer and somehow making that his favorite band. Um, I believe is where we left off. So yeah, I think I think the whole point of that was Oktoberfests in yes. the fall, pumpkins in the fall, Guinness during the winter, Guinness in March always. Guinness yeah. In March. And then by the end of St. Patrick's Day, I'm done with Guinness. I'm okay. With Guinness. But then the water, weather starts warming up. You um, you know you can have some wheat beers and there's all different styles and flavors of the wheat beers. Uh, IPAs are nice. I try to stay away from anything over 8%. That's, that's not a bad yeah, decision. <laughs> you know, it wasn't always like yeah, that. I've, but, had uh, nice, I've had some nights. Nice yep, yep. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather have 8 5% beers than 3 8% beers. Right. Yeah. So I, I guess my rule of thumb is when you get up from the bar to go to the bathroom at the, for the first time and you already know your buzz, yeah. that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um. So bands. So bands. I'm, I'm still waiting to so, wrap back to so, bands. <laughs> the long answer to that was, it all depends on the mood when the band is here. I love an 80s band. Yeah. For a night. Mm -hmm. I love the blues. For a night. Yeah. If I listen to it for three bands in a row, I'm done. So, so you like a variety. You know, I, I yeah. do like a variety. Yeah. Um, but you know, we have, we have a lot of really good bands that come in here. And if they're the third 80s night we've had this month, then it's not my favorite. Yeah. It's the first one that we've had in six months that I'm, I forget how much I like it, and it then becomes my right. favorite. And I can see that. I can see like a nice, beautiful summer day, having a good reggae band back here. Oh, yeah. You know, yep, the reggae suck band. Suck down a couple red stripes. I'll tell you what, band I, what bands I really like, um, and this is just my own per personal preference, is the jam bands. Yep. So the you know the ten minute songs and you know you go up there and sing a little bit, but they do more jamming than they do mm -hmm. singing. And every time they play, it's it's the same song, but they play it a little bit of different because yep. it's. Uh, so uh, I've been into that lately, rather than uh, songs like from the eighties and nineties. So yeah, that, that's my list. Nice. Well, I'm a big fan of like Irish and punk and yeah, so you have again, the gobshites here. Again, the, I they were really great. like the Irish music. Yep. I thought By the time the Irish is done singing, I'm good for a week. <laughs> but then when they start singing again, I really, really like it. it. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about um, uh, a couple of your your bartenders. Yep. Staff, uh, uh, love my staff. Love my oh, staff. Oh, they're great. Hate my staff. Love my staff. No, love my they're staff. Uh, Smitty, my Smitty staff. Matt, Sean. Yep. They're all great. We got a good um, group. But they're really knowledgeable. And when we were was it Monday night? I think it was Monday night. You guys are running a beer class. Yep. So you do yep. uh, a, an excellent job of making sure your staff is aware of... Well, there's nothing worse than someone coming in and not knowing what they want and asking suggestions from the bartender and have the bartender say, well, I don't know. Right. I mean, it's just... And it's, it's, I, I worked for Home Depot for uh, eight years, and it's that you walk through the door, and it could be your first day, but the person, the, the customer who walks through the door, you're the expert. That's right. So That's they right. assume you know everything. That's right. Um, and honestly, I think your staff does a phenomenal well, job. Well, thank you very much. The, the, I trained all of them myself. No, I, and yet somehow they still do a yeah, job. <laughs> and most of them stay. Yeah, I can't yeah. figure it out. No, they're they're excellent. We've had nothing but uh, 
No, we've had good yeah. luck with the stats. Yeah. We've had really good luck. Um, so, what do you see in the future for New World? Like, do well, you have any big plans that you can reveal? Let me see. Let me see. We got many changes coming you up just in did January. A whole big remodel in the front. Yep, we just put yep. uh, open windows up there, and mm -hmm. of course, we finished that in late October. So we haven't. We don't even know if the windows open up yet, but they're supposed to open up. So we're uh, we're waiting for the spring to open up those windows. Yep. They'll open up to the street. Uh, we just bumped the wall out in front. That gives us a little more space, so we can kind of spread out a little bit. And you took over the we took the, over the, the bakery. Uh, yep, the guilty door. bakery yep. uh, moved across the street. We took over their space. Um, I, I think that's that's, well, that's enough a, for a while. That's an interesting little story, because the guilty bakery moved across the street where the cornerstone was. That's correct. And the cornerstone now lives here. And yes, we the cornerstone is now the New World Tavern. Yes. But we brought over their um, all their personnel at that time. Yeah. Um, and in their employees, and they now work for us to do the breakfast over here. Yeah. Which um, is it? Is it just the weekends that they do the breakfast? No, nope. we day? do it. We do it every day, but Monday. Okay. So uh, Tuesday through Friday, we do um, a breakfast and lunch menu. Yeah. And then at three o'clock, we go to the old New World Tavern menu. Yeah. Uh, during the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, we do breakfast until noon, and then we go to the New World Tavern. Menu. Okay. And in case our listeners are interested in, in how the breakfast has been here, uh, I have been here four times in three weeks for breakfast, um, and I recommend the homemade corned beef hash. Well, I'm it's glad a, you liked it. I'm glad favorite. you liked it. My kids love it here. We've had a lot of luck um, with the locals; mm -hmm. and they really enjoy it. Um, we sometimes forget when we first did it that the cornerstone was. Four times smaller than us. It's a tiny little space. Yeah. And then when they moved here, instead of 20 seats, they had 60 seats. Yeah. And it was some growing pains trying to figure out how to get that stuff out of the have kitchen. It, have you had to staff up a little bit? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. When when we first opened, I think that first Sunday we opened, we got jammed with people, and it was it was a nightmare. It was yeah. we just couldn't execute. So um, I think now that uh, we've got the right people, we you know we're all. Uh, staffed up, that it's it's a lot smoother. I think people come in, they, they kind of notice it, yeah. and they still joke about it. But you know, it's the things that you don't think of until it happens. And right, right, yeah. Then you feel like, oh yeah, it won't be a problem. Like, oh yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. no, it's. Um, no, I love it. I'm a big fan here. I'm, here I'm glad. I'm glad. You're probably too much. <laughs> no, you can't be here too much. You can never be yeah. here too much. Um, and uh, so I'm trying to think about. Where and you're only here too much when you can't remember being here at all. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. But, like, what about if you can't remember if you were here, like, on what day? Well, you just come in and we'll tell him. We'll all tell right, him. all right. So, um, the other thing that I've, I've spoken with about other um, business owners along this the street here and uh, whatnot, and we've kind of been talking about uh, our good friend Tatum, um, is the camaraderie on the street. And I always kind of assumed that... To me, you, you'd all be in competition with each other, with each other but it, it seems like you're all friends and everyone hangs out. Like I see Matt from Driftwood out here all the time, and Tatum, and yeah, everyone it's, goes it's, to Speedwell. And it, it's, it's hard to explain, but you know, we we're all we're all competing for the customers. Right. I mean, there's but no it seems doubt. It's like a friendly competition. It is a friendly competition, um, and it's it's to the point where I always thought, and I still do think, and I hope I'm right. That if I run out of bar towels or limes or, geez, even if I have a rush on Bud Light and I'm light on Bud Light, that you could go to anyone up and down the street and they would hook you up until you can, right, you know, um, give it back to them. But yeah, I've got uh, there's a really really good relationship, not only with the bars in the area and the restaurants in the area, but uh, some of the stores also. Yeah. That. Um, you know, it's it's a big neighborhood. It's, right. We're here more than we are home. So yeah, and, and that's honestly, if you don't like your neighbors, it's going to be a horrible place to work. Right, and that's one of the things that really kind of made me focus in EVR in Plymouth. Cause we we messed around in, in uh, Marshfield and some other locations, but just everyone here is so nice to work with. And you know, yeah, you want to do something? Yeah, we lucked sure, out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, when we first moved in. Uh, you know, it was T-Bones, Main Street, it was... What was in this location before? What? This used to be an Indian restaurant called the Guru. Okay. Um, and what they did, from what I understand, was they had an Indian restaurant up front, mm -hmm. and out back was a 
they call it a nightclub, but it was like a hard rock, acid rock. You know, people, yeah. people wouldn't cross the street if people would cross the street if, if people from the Guru were out smoking, having a smoke. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because of the clientele that came in here. Right. Um, and we took it over from them and changed it to what it is now. Of course, you know, five years later, it's slowly morphed into what it is now. Um, but a lot of people still walk up and down the street and come in and don't realize that we have the back room or how big this place is. Yeah. Because it is longer than it is wide, so we don't get oh, a lot. Oh yeah, of, absolutely. Yeah, we don't get a lot of street presence. And and I I love uh, when we get a new model. I'm like, oh, we draw in the back room, and they're like, what? And I'm like, no, you'll see when you get here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's it's a full on concert hall back here. You know, there's a sound system and lights. And yep. It's it's a great space. Um, and so you have storage upstairs, and I've noticed up there there's a bank vault door. Is this used yeah. to be a bank? At Wait, one no, time? way back when, it used to be the um, the Puritan clothing, and is that like the fur storage? Yeah, that's that's where they that used to they, store yeah. the, the the furs upstairs. Oh wow, that's cool. And um, they used to have a big bank vault door to yeah. close it and lock the furs in. I'm assuming. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, this is because uh, where you store the chairs, I, and I'm like, wow, Carl really likes his chairs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess the, yeah. you know the the rumor has it that this used, used this used to be an old stagecoach stop. Yeah. Because there's three floors up here, and there's all little small little rooms everywhere. Um, I don't oh, know. Oh, so like, do not stay here? Yeah. This wow. used to be like a like oh, a little cool. stagecoach yeah. bed and breakfast or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. Or just yeah, I don't know what the hell it was, but yeah. brothel or something. Um. So are you uh, kind of like, there's a lot of history in Plymouth, have you always, like, do you live in Plymouth? Are you uh, I live in Kingston. I've been yeah. in Kingston for about 20 years plus. Oh, okay, so you've been, you're yeah. a local guy. Yep. Um, totally spaced on what the hell I was going to talk about. That's right. I'm not going to lie. I'll tell you. When we, first moved <laughs> down here, when we first moved down here, there was a lot of, um, and this is, goes to the growth of Plymouth. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of boarded up, not a lot of boarded up, but there was a couple of boarded up buildings. Um, a couple of vacant buildings. Uh, Only five or six years ago? It seemed like it was, yeah, five, six years ago. Wow. And since then, I don't think there's maybe one open storefront up on Main and Court Street. Yeah, they're, um, they're, they're Not they're even down the waterfront. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I think that, yeah, Plymouth is, is really, really growing. Uh, I think that it, it seems to be the place to go. We're, when we first opened, it was, you know, let's go to the New World Tavern in Plymouth. Now it's let's go to Plymouth, and people end up at the New World. Yeah, then, yeah. So I, I think that it's it's become more of a destination place than it ever has. I would say in the last twenty years. I did see an online article uh, one time, and I believe I sent it to you. Um, yeah, I don't read your emails. Yeah, yeah, that's not it. Um, where Plymouth was considered the most drinking. Yeah, the most drinking town yeah. in Massachusetts. And it and was your a, bar. And it was a picture of my bar, <laughs> which I. Love. But they said, you know, no press is bad press. Mm. Okay. Bad press is no press or something like that. Um, but, yeah, I saw that. I and, thought that was uh, great. Yeah, I got, so, a, I got a lot of emails on that do one. You, uh, do you get good press? <laughs> <laughs> we do. Yeah. We, we actually do. Um, I'll tell you, we, we do very well on um, TripAdvisor and Yelp, <laughs> although I hate Yelp and TripAdvisor. Um, see, I'm going to disagree. I, I really like Yelp. See, I always think that for every 100 good, satisfied people that come in here having a great time, mm -hmm. and two of them don't, yeah. one of those two is going to go on Yelp and say they had a crappy time. And out of every 100, you're probably going to But those 98 one. people yep. that had a great time... Yep. Maybe one of them goes on. So. That's absolutely true. So, it's, but if you know it's, that, well, I think yeah. sometimes too that people do it because I don't want to say they're miserable people, but it's it's misery. No, no, no. Girl, misery tell me how much you hate your customers. No. <laughs> I'll tell you, this this is would be the perfect job if it wasn't for the customers and the employees. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, just me and thirty-two lines and one hundred and fifty bottles. Shit, that sounds like a good I'm job. I'm telling you, can be, I apply for that? <laughs> Um, no, I just, I, I think that, and I'm old school, so that if I didn't like a place, you tell your friends, hey, I went to this place, and then you can't find it. Yeah. Uh, now it's all over the internet. Oh, sure. When yeah. somebody has a bad experience. Yep. And we've had, to no fault of anybody's, 
we've had people go on and put a bad review on and say, you know, um, my steak and cheese sandwich was cold and my steak tips were, you know, chewy. And I get a hold of that person and say, I don't know where you went, but we don't serve Sir those steak items. And cheese, right. So yeah, I, yeah. Like, it couldn't have been us. Right. And they're like, oh, no, it was a different tavern. It was, that was just the first tavern that came up. I'm right. sorry, that's my oh, mistake. Oh, I'm in Plymouth, Michigan. But, you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah. It's, it's a review that stays on there forever. Right. So, um, yeah, the reviews. And, and, and my thing as far as, you know, I spend a lot of time at bars and restaurants. Um, some people are going to have bad days. Right. You know, I'm not great nope. every day at work. Nope. But if I go and say, hey, listen, this steak and cheese, Carl, that you made me. That you don't serve um, isn't warm, and you fix it, then that's fine. Well, you know, that's all we have. That, anybody, me, anybody you know, in the hospitality that's industry knows you're going to make mistakes. Right. Just give me the chance to fix our mistakes, right. and hopefully we can do that. But don't leave. It's the people who sit there and be like, it's "No, no, people, everything's yep, great," and, and they, they leave. Walk and then, out. It's the worst you know, experience everybody's, I've ever had. Everybody's yeah. brave but on the internet. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah. I mean, we haven't gotten any bad reviews on our podcast. So far. <laughs> so far. So far. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, I'm, I'm glad there's a way that people can look up our restaurant on, online yeah. and find out, you know, where they rate and where they review, because I used to do that, too. I mean, right. I, I still do it. Um, and, and I, it's, I, just, it's just sad that, you know, a, a big percentage of that is only when something negative happens. Yeah, but I, I feel like people who, who use Yelp to, to find restaurants understands that. I, I would and hope you, so. And you can read some of the reviews so. and go, oh, this, this person's clearly an right. asshole. Right. You know? Because um, I've used it when we traveled around and, you know, found some really great restaurants. Yeah, it is, it is a great tool. It's just when you're on my side of it. Yeah. I mean, every you can't not take you, everything personal. You, you can't not read the bad ones. No. <laughs> no, you can't not. Right, you yeah. can't take it personal. No, you, you can't not. take it personal. Yeah. So now I'm out there trying to find out who served that table, why that, you know, why we did this, why we didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you get some nimrods out there. Who the hell made too. that guy's steak and cheese? Right. <laughs> but I mean, even you know, you get some yeah. nimrods out there, customers too. So you got to take it tongue in cheek. Yeah. Um, some people are out for a free meal, and yeah. they will complain about the best meal in town just so that you come up. Yeah. And that's you know. It's, Something you try. Oh, you do that? You stride no, oh, not for you. This beer doesn't uh, taste yeah, right, Carl. Yeah. Once you have another one, you already have like nine of them. Um, who drinks peanut butter chocolate beer anyway? Uh, for our listeners, if you're drinking Perfect Monkey dishwasher, you know you know your shit. That's fantastic. Um, and uh, Matt, I think Matt was the one who turned me on to it. Yeah, I do like it. I do like it. Yeah, I, think it's I, I, I think, again. It's called uh, Purple Monkey Dishwasher. Dishwasher. It's an evil genius. Uh, it has nothing to do with the style. It has nothing to do with what kind of beer it is. It has nothing to do with... I, I was told but it's a But some reference. people see it. Well, some people see it. Yeah. And want it just because it's a funky name. Oh, yeah. So oh, I would it's, totally it's do... It's oh, all marketing. It's all marketing. Who is it? Is it, uh, is it... Who's it the beer seller? Angela? Angela at the beer seller yells at me constantly. Because I'd be like, wow, this is a pretty label. You don't drink yep. the label. I'm like, yep. yeah, but it's really pretty. It, it really is. It's, it's, it, there really is a yeah. lot to the marketing. There really, really is. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we, I think people would come in here and have the purple monkey dishwasher because of the name. Of the name. Oh, it's a great it's name. name. Yeah. And it's a great beer. Yeah. Oh, but I, I think, think it's delicious. If, if it just said, you know, peanut butter chocolate no, style, so you'd be like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah um, whatever. Porter, by the way. Oh, it is a porter. It I'm is sorry, a it's a porter. No, it's uh, Sorry. But. Yeah. You know, everybody talks about Hetty Topper. Yeah. You, you can't do a beer podcast without talking about Hetty Topper. Uh, What's Hetty Topper? What's Hetty Topper? Yeah. Oh, my God. This isn't a beer podcast. This it is, is today. Well, oh. today it is. Hetty Topper is a beer in Vermont. It's rated number one, blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. People drive up for days, hours. Is this an IPA? And it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's an God, IPA. I don't like IPA. But people camp out in their cars for days just to wait in line to buy a case of it. And everybody that comes in here says, do you have Hetty Hawk Chopper? People have Chopper? a lot of spare time. If you could get, and we can't get Hetty Chopper, by the way, because it's not available in Massachusetts. If you could get Hetty Chopper, and I had Hetty Chopper on draft all yeah. the time, nobody would want it, because now they can get it easy. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's Beanie Babies. It, it really is. It's a really good beer, don't get me <laughs> yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. It really is a yeah. good beer. I don't know if it's the best in the world, but it's really good beer. But if people want what well, they, they can't can have, have or, yeah, or what they haven't had yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, 
firmly, so you should just tell people they can't have beers. Well, that's why we switch around our draft lines all the time. Yeah. Just so people can't come in here and say, you know, I've had it, I've had it, I've had it, I've had it. Um, now, how often do you switch? I mean, it seems like every time I come in here, there's a different list, but is there... As soon as something kicks, something Guinness else Guinness is always on. on. Guinness is always yeah. on, because uh, I can't get the goddamn faucet off its stuff. <laughs> um, we always keep... Bar. We always try to keep uh, Kentucky Bourbon Ale because it's just Which one of the best sellers. Delicious. And we always keep on for some reason um, is the Watchers at Blueberry. Really? Yep. Wow. We always keep I'm it not on. a fruit beer fan, but um, it, it's it's actually really good. Yeah. But those are the three that I'll keep on. I, I love the Kentucky, uh, Kentucky Bourbon Barrel beer, but that's one of those ones that. I didn't realize how strong it was when I... Yes, that's the and above 8%. I was, uh, oh, should yeah. never I was, go. I was at a, a bar here in Plymouth, which I will not name because this doesn't make them look good. And the bartender was like, do you want a tall or a small? And I'm like, I love a tall. After yep. like three talls, I was yep. hammered to the point where someone called me the next day and was like, how you feeling? Yeah. And I'm like, fine, why? But you and Jimmy were having a conversation with with each other, but uh, you weren't having the same conversation. I'm like, I don't remember that at all. Yeah, it's, so it's, 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 it's strong, it's, but it's good. Our rule of thumb here at the New World Tavern is if there's any beer over 8%, we serve it in a smaller glass. Yes. Um, it just You just can't give somebody a, you know, a 20 ounce of... Of an eight or nine or ten percent beer, it's, you just you, and people won't be able to finish it. No, they won't be able to finish no. it. It's just it's it's it, too and, much. And if they don't like, I never look at the percentage. So if you yeah, someone you, offers me a tall, you, you should yeah, stop yeah, looking yeah. at the percentage. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a big it, one. That's it, a big it can one. Be pretty rough. Um, um, yeah. So, I guess uh, what was the question that you asked me about the bands? My favorite band. Your favorite band. We never yes. really got to that. I told you we were going to get to it. It's I think I it's think coming. that uh, you said it when the computer went down. Yeah, I probably did. I yeah. love those guys. The computer keeps going down. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope they come again. And we had a really good time. Yeah, 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 no, the crowd was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. And everyone loves acid jazz, funk, reggae, rap, pop stuff. So what else do we want to talk about? Um, what do you do when you're not here? How long, I, are you not here? You, it seems like every no. There is there is a lot of time that I'm not here. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? I got two boys in college. I got one boy in. Uh, you have kids. I have three boys. There are young Carl. No girls. Around. Do you know why I have three boys? Because God loves me. Yeah, I have one girl. Okay, <laughs> you're going to heaven. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so three boys. Two of them are out of the house in college. Nice. One of them just keeps on sticking around. He's a junior. I uh, just got his license the other day. So He's a junior in high school and hasn't moved out yet? No. Son, lazy son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, his bags are all packed. Yeah. I, don't know. I keep changing the lock. Go live with your grandmother and see how your life is. Uh, yeah, I did it for 20 years. Yeah. Um, so what do, uh, do they want to get into the restaurant business? Do you want them in the restaurant business? Nope, they're all, they all do their own thing. I yeah. mean, they've... they've my youngest son, Carl, he works here, uh, you know, washing the dishes, helping out, yep. uh, washing the floors, cleaning up, getting ready for the bands. And um, so does my middle son, Christopher, who is now at Berkeley College of Music, so oh, now, nice. of course now he's not working here. And my oldest was here, and he used to do dishes and prep, and then he uh, was a line cook for a while, oh, nice. and then he went off to school. You so. didn't pay him, did you? I did. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, wait, just, and then on, I just on rent. The, oh, oh, there you go. Get it back. <laughs> so they've been here working. I don't think it's yeah. what they want to do for their life, but yeah. that's okay too, you know? Yeah, no, they still get yep. to learn stuff like that. Yep. Nice. So, I'm get my son a job here in the summer. Yeah, if he wants to wash dishes. Yeah. He can do whatever he wants. Excellent. Yeah. I was trying to get him a job this fall. And, uh, How old? Uh, he's going to be 15 this June. Yeah, 15 is fine. He can come in and wash yeah, dishes. Yeah, don't right. cut himself. Nice. <laughs> So we got. Just yeah. don't cut yourself. If he cuts himself, just toss him in the dumpster. Go ahead. He's not. And he listens to this, so like, I, have, I, I, I have. I have. I have. Go over to the restaurant next door and say yeah. you were working there. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I was working at Driftwood. Yep. <laughs> uh, so I know we lost that time. I have no idea where we're at. Uh, we we'll call it forty good? minutes. Call well, forty minutes. Yeah. So. Um, not asking you to name a band here, but. Um, is there uh, music, uh, TV show, movies? Like what? Let me see. What am I into? Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Normally we ask people what, what, where they find their inspiration, but uh, uh, no, I have no inspiration. Yeah, you just kind of kind of wing it. We just drink it around, and yell at people. 
Yeah. I don't yell at anybody. I don't know. I, I, I have from a very well, reliable source that you're the grumpiest man in Plymouth. I am not the grumpiest <laughs> man in Plymouth. I am not the grumpiest man in Plymouth. I'm the happiest guy in Plymouth. I just hide it well. Named Carl, who's um, in this room right now. Yeah, I get, I get myself into trouble when I yell at people. Uh, if I go out of a beer at uh, the bars around town, I get scolded from the employees there. They say, uh, you know you don't work here. <laughs> Why, do you start giving them a hard time? I do. Hey, make sure you clean that. You know, hey, these that lines aren't cut sitting, right. Yeah, that food's been sitting in the window for a few minutes. Let's, nice. yeah, you know? Hey, those customers just sat down. Don't you think you should give them so a bad menu? I don't work in any of those I'm places. You. <laughs> yeah, when they see me coming, they, they go, oh, good, Kyle's coming. Um, so that was kind of the question. What do you do in your spare time? You start talking about your kids and how you charge them. Right? Oh, yeah. What do I do in my spare time? Uh, what am I into, you asked? Yeah. What shows? You seem like a golfer to me. You know, I, I, I am a golfer. So I can tell. Um, I don't know why. I just felt like you're a golfer. I know how to golf? Yeah. I'm not saying you're good. I see it on the TV <laughs> all the time. But to call me a golfer is probably not the right thing. Well, do you own clubs? I do own clubs. You're a golfer. Have yeah. you ever picked up and thrown the ball instead of swinging at it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you're a golfer. Um, I feel like I could golf if I got like a baseball bat instead of a driver. It's just like kind of tough. You know, you think, swing. but that's tough too. There's well, I'm going to be bad at either one. At least I the know. first one I've yeah. done before. Uh, what do I like to do? Um, see, what shows do I like to watch? Oh, you know what I've been watching is that Westworld. Oh, oh yeah, that that's is good. You've been so watching. good. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a little freaky, but yeah. Uh, yeah. it's not bad. Are you current? Because they just finished I'm current, season. man. I just watched yeah, it the other day. Yeah, they just finished yep, it. Yep, I, I still don't know what happened, but I watched it the other day. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. It's It's... Is there a lot of duty in that? Duty. Duty. There's a lot of naked everyone in that. Okay. Oh, yeah. I just yeah. saw someone post something online that there's a lot of duty in it. It's, so. uh, yeah, I've seen shows with much worse duty. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, maybe it's not what you want to say. Um, I bet you he's seen worse. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen what is it, Black Sails? Also oh, that's very, very good. I like that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. I like that one. So I was never even into these shows that keep on going over and on and on and on until a few years ago when I watched Lost. Oh, and I love Lost. Have you, have you seen Deadwood? Yes. Oh, so good. Yeah. Dude, all they do is swear in that oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pissing. Yeah, that's a great Yeah, one. no, I like that one. Then all of a sudden I watched the last show and it never, it, yeah, it, never came back. It was like too expensive to make or something. Yeah, like I, that. I, I, think I like they've it. they've been talking about making a movie uh, off and on. Really? I don't think it's going to happen. I don't I know. Love for it too. I, I think it's one of those things that everyone involved wants to, but most of them are, you know, yeah. busy. Well, Timothy Olyphant. Timothy Olyphant. Uh, yeah. Oh no, that ended. A while oh, ago. is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, have you so seen we that? Uh, we no, we do yet. a fantasy football here. So I'm into the football. Oh, nice. Watching football, the fantasy. We do no, the New no, World. Not a sports. New World person. Tavern fantasy. Nice. Football league. Plus, like, uh, out of the... That, oh, out did of I mention that I just kicked Sean's ass? Because I, I just want to make sure it's on there. No. No, I kicked his ass, man. He yeah. was in first place. Now he's in fourth. <laughs> Loser. So uh, we'll make sure we... Uh, so the playoffs just started. So we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens with the, that. Uh, yeah. The post of this. Uh, uh, what else? So he can relive his, his there you go. loss in January. Yep. When this goes up. He, is, uh, he is on record for being the most fired person from the New World Tavern. No shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How often does he get fired? This, oh. is, this is super interesting. Yeah. yeah, no, Sean's been fired probably seven times. Wow. Yeah. But you keep hiring him in? No, I don't. He just keeps on he's showing, just showing up. Like you fire him, he shows up. As long as he fills the shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's been fired on Facebook. I think my wife fired him twice. Oh, yeah, he's been yeah. fired all the time. Nice. I, I think uh, the next um, life drawing will fire him for you. Yep. Yep, and, say, and you know what he'll say? You know how many times I hear that? <laughs> yes, yes we do. Yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah he's actually yeah. one of, I believe it's two, of my original employees that still work here. Wow. Yep. Who's the other one? Matt Bean. Oh, really? Oh, wow, yeah. Nice. Yep. Nice. Now, and if you... I'm forgetting somebody, I apologize. But yeah. I think they're the, no, they'll, 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 they'll let you know. They're the final yeah. final. If oh, they, they have yes, to they will. this, they'll yeah, let you know. Matt used to bounce, didn't he? Matt used to, yeah? Yeah, like way at the beginning. Yep. Really? I didn't know that. He either. was here my first night bouncing. Yeah, I remember because I remember I think my parents were down there at one point. It's like, yeah, I saw this big kid with a beard. It's like, yep. yeah. I, and now he's running the Now he's running the place. Oh, my brother no, my brother was at his wedding. Yeah, yeah. And sent me a very drunk picture with Sean. Nice. Which was Did you get invited to the wedding? I did actually. Yeah. I didn't go. Right. Um, yeah. Me and the wife celebrated our 25th anniversary on that week, and we went. Nice. I don't know, Punta Cana or somewhere. Oh, very yeah. cool. Yeah, it was. It was so a million who, degrees. But who, who is the uh, head chef here? Like, who's? 
Uh, Who's just, responsible for the great food? Jess Childers. Jess Childers? Is the chef. Yeah, we should get her on. But... And the rest of the crew, too. I mean, everybody yeah, responsible. Yeah, there's always, uh, yeah. There's always somebody running the show. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't know anything about football, but you have to have a But she's the main... Yes, do that Yeah, she's really good at work. She's a lot of fun with Tyler yeah. Chess. So that would be a good one. Um, see, what else? What else am I into? Uh, I think that's it. That's it? Yeah. Fantasy football, not playing golf. Not playing golf. Charging kids around. And serialized TV. <laughs> well, and yelling at the employees and customers. Well, and and just firing them randomly. <laughs> not randomly. He deserved every time. He deserved it every time. Seven times he deserved it? Really? Oh, yeah. Ask anybody. <laughs> yeah. Ask anybody. Oh, I feel like that might work, because I feel like that'll, yeah. I feel like we should just bring him in and just tell stories of times Mecca, of yeah. times Sean got fired. Yeah. Yeah, we, well, we were talking about black sales. That was pretty good. Yeah, okay. that was that's great. Yeah. Um, but that's it. No, no, the shows that I'm into. Yeah, used to be Survival when they first came. I out. recommend. I didn't uh, realize it was still black, on Black Mirror. Years. That is what I'm watching currently on Netflix. Oh, that is. It is fucked up. I don't watch anything spooky. Yeah, that's uh, not gonna work, Andy. Uh, it's not. It's not spooky, scary like monsters. It's more just. It's it's weird. It's weird, kind of like. Uh, near future, our technology is not necessarily a great thing. It, it's basically what it phones, but too much, is I think the way I've had it described. Uh, I think it's great. I'm, it's really good. It's just super fucking yeah. weird. Yeah. And a little too real life at times. Yes. I, it's one of those things, like, every time I watch an episode, I want to, like, delete my Facebook account. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll cross that one off the list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good. It's just not. It's dark. Yeah. Oh. And of course... Star Trek Next Next Generation. Your Next Gen fan. Oh, yeah. Nice. Because the original sucks balls. Well, you know, <laughs> if, if you watch it now, it does. But when you watch it way back then, it was yeah. like... I don't know. Even when I was a I'm kid... Going, like, I I'm literally really about to go it. across the table and punch him. It was intentional. No, um, no. But like when I was a kid, I couldn't... like Old school Doctor Who. Loved old school Doctor Who. Really? Yep. The guy oh, with yeah. the, the... Tom Baker. The, the, the scarf. The scarf yeah. 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 I used to watch it too. Yeah. Now I can't get into it. Really? No, no, yeah, no. I can't understand good. what anybody's it's saying. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, old school Trek. Never liked it. No? Don't care for it. Yep, next generation. But it's I never great. got into the other ones. Deep Space Nine. And... Deep Space Nine was very good sci-fi. It wasn't necessarily great Trek. It's okay. It wasn't... Next Gen. Well, Next Generation was always kind of optimistic and positive and... Have you seen the new movies? I really did that. I have. Yeah? What'd you think? Um, I liked the first two. The yeah. last one I didn't care for. Really? I didn't hate it, but it wasn't... You know what? It didn't I'm, live up to my see? expectations. Carl's a smart man. Carl's Dude, a smart man. See, no, hey. Wait, that's probably the only time... Shit, that's on record. It's yeah. Like, well, go to Star yeah. Wars. What about the last Star Wars movie? Loved it. See, I thought it was, it was okay. It was in a lot of... Well, the problem is... Up until then, there had not been a good Star Trek movie in my lifetime. Star Wars. Was Star Wars, either way. Yeah. No, no, no. Sir. Yeah, but there had not been a good Star Wars he's, movie in my lifetime. He's like 12. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because Return of the Jedi came out like two months before I was born. And literally, it had been the prequels, which are uniformly not very good. No, so great. you don't watch the movies if they weren't Oh, created, I've seen them, but it's one of those things where it had been 30 years since someone had made I mean, a good no Star Wars movie. Right. That's correct. And, I mean, I'll be honest... It's Abrams, and he has he cribs a lot from A New Hope. I mean, a lot. Right. Oh, it's it's very it's derivative. Of, oh yeah, yeah, but it's right. but I thought it's it was well executed. The characters felt right. It felt like a Star Wars movie, yeah. and it felt like I enjoyed the shit out of watching it. Like I've seen it way more than I've seen any of the three prequel movies, if only because I feel like I enjoy watching it. Well, Prequels, yeah, terrible. they're bad movies. Are you gonna see Rogue One? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll watch yeah, all. That, that looks great. Yeah, I think that looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah they all look good. They all. I mean, it's Disney's doing much better than Lucas was. That's no surprise. They already got the follow-up movie already made. Oh, the so Rogue One. Great. I thought they weren't doing oh, yeah, a sequel. It's new Hope. There you go, brother. And you thought you were a nerd. Uh, somebody got me the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a nerd too. Uh, well, I think uh, I think that does about does it, Carl. All right. Yeah. Hopefully, your first podcast was a good time. It even wasn't though, bad. It wasn't bad. We had technical problems. So that's all right. Yeah. yeah. That's fish's Less fault. technical problems than I thought you guys were gonna have. Yeah. 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 It's fish's so. fault, and you know he's only so good. And he works shit. That, that's really. It. He works for free. Oh, there you go. It, it's it's literally. I mean, he's covering the cost he, of the podcast. He works for free, and it's almost worth it. I don't know if it's free. <laughs> I just gave him a pear cider. Well, Better yeah, rip it is, out of some little girl's hand, but you know, I got it. <laughs> That's if my she wanted, part of the night. 
<laughs> if she had wanted it, she'd have fought for it more. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Um, so for our listeners, if you are uh, in Plymouth or happen to be in Plymouth, uh, which I'm sure more people will be with the uh, 400 anniversary coming up. That's correct. Uh, make sure you stop at the New World Tavern. Order some great food. If it's a Monday, hit up Noodle Night because that's a blast. Um, and lots of beer. And make sure you ask for Carl. Ask for me. He I, will. I, uh, I'll hide in the back, but you can ask for him. <laughs> he, he will. will uh, you can't see the air quotes, but I'm making air quotes. He won't be here. He will take care of all your Yelp needs and yeah. your requests. Yeah, and he will personally go. make you a, uh, a steak and cheese. Steak and cheese sub. Yep. Which Andy will order every single yeah, here goddamn here go. time he's here yep. now until the turn. He put it on well, Yelp that he didn't get one. Yeah, see, here's the problem. He, he <laughs> ordered off the menu on Monday, so yeah. now he thinks he can get stuff done. Your steak and cheese tastes like a flatbread pizza. That was a flatbread pizza. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that's I, what, I ordered a flatbread pizza Monday, and I still got one. It wasn't yeah. on the menu. It's like, oh, it's Noodle Night. It's like, yeah, no, no, it's Andy. I'm like, oh, I don't know why I thought it was on the menu. Because, yeah. you know why? Because we didn't look at the damn menu. That's I was going to say, because no, you didn't look I don't look at the menu. Yeah. No, I mean, we've been here enough that at this point the menu's a problem. Yeah. It's so like, all going to be changing. We're coming up with a new menu. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no. Not all of them. Yeah. Just a couple of Just items. tell me the steam buns are going to be there. Cause steam buns will always be there. Okay. Good. Oh, the steam buns are amazing. I, I, the duck wings are amazing. The duck wings will yeah. probably stay. I love the duck wings. I love telling my daughter that I have duck wings. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. Because we'll be down at, uh, at at the park and all the ducks are there. Yep. Yeah. And she'd be like, Those wings and she'd be like let's delicious. name them. And I'm like, okay, that one's lunch. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Like, that one's breakfast because it'll be left over. So what do we got coming on the new menu? I'm not saying. You'll have come to come on. and check it out. Well, here's the thing. By the time this comes live, it's, it's going to be way too Yeah, so yeah. listen, when this goes live, when if you listen to me, come on down and check out our new menu. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. Carl, thank you. All right, my pleasure, my pleasure. It's been great. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll see you house. the first Monday of every month. I'll be here. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. All right, thanks for listening to our podcast. Uh, don't forget to check out our other podcast. Uh, there's the Bar Talk podcast. There's Old Colony Cast. And, of course, the Inebriar Art podcast along with Jam Packed. Um, you can find all those on Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. Um, if you're on some sort of service and you can't find it, let us know, and we'll help you out and or add our podcast to that too. Um, you can contact us at inebriart at yahoo.com and follow us on Facebook as well as Twitter at inebriart. And feel free to send us some um, tips, ideas, advice, hate mail, whatever it is. You can get us there. And again, thanks for listening. <laughs>